Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in here with team number 67, the hot team, this Hall of Fame team at the Michigan State Championship. Here's the tomorrow, build a great robot once again this year. So much to discover. Here with me, I have Ella, Andreas, Maya, and Colin. Let's find out more on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. All right, Ella, why don't you get us started talking about some of the mechanical features of this robot? How are you guys scoring for the hot team? Okay, so this is the 2025 Hotbot. And this is the centerpiece of a robot in which everything else is based off of and is and how we decide the architecture of the robot, which is the elevator. It has um, two Krakens powering it and it is able to fully extend in less than a second. Also, because of in 2023, we we're tipping a lot. We had to add a steel plate to the front of the robot to help mitigate the chance of falling over. And then on this back side, you can see we have our sponsor panel. And as you can see, it's held to the robot with zip ties. And that's because it's actually attached to the robot via bumpers because of weight issues that we had. Next up, we have the climber. So this is the climber mechanism right here. It um, extends out and then there are two servos connected to it. So gas struts extend the climber out and then the two servos um, switch out and then it hits, or when it goes next to the cage, the robot, the two bars of the cage will hit against these two little switches right here. And that will activate a signal in which these two servos will automatically extend out. And therefore we can be more precise with climbing and also this competition, because of these automatic climbers, we have been a lot faster with, uh, with climbing. And then also here we have the intake. It is inspired by Jack and the Bot, but we've made our own, um, we've made our own changes. So we've also extended these upper rollers to be a lot wider. And then our speed is different as well. And then it hands it off. So it takes the coral in, so the coral, do we have one? Oh. The coral comes in this way, and then it lifts up, and it hands it off to our arm. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the crucial thing about our intake is that we had to get rid of nearly 10 pounds or around 10 pounds of our robot to be able to fit that on. Well, thank you, Ella. Incredible iteration. Colin, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the scoring mechanism that makes us to the hot box and rank one on their field here at States. Yeah, of course. So as Ella mentioned, we had to take 10 pounds out of the robot. And a lot of that came from working with um, topology optimization software that we got from our sponsor, Altair. And that was especially prevalent in the scoring mechanism. So. This is our arm. It starts here on this carriage. Now we have a 96.7 to one gear ratio between our motor that's powering the rotation of this shoulder and the actual arm. So you'll see that we have all these 3D printed parts in here. And for a lot of this, we ended up having to replace all of our steel, not steel, all of our aluminum quarter inch side plates with carbon fiber inlaid 3D prints. And all of this was optimized using Altair's software because it really helped us take out all of that weight. And we had all these small increments of weight savings that eventually added up to allow for an entire intake. So moving over here to the shoulder, you'll see one of those as a really good example. This piece is crucial structurally to our robot because everything hinges off of it. We have both our coral manipulator up here and our algae manipulator down there. So we ran an optimization on this and printed all of it using nylon SLS, which has really helped us stay extremely rigid and precise during the game. So I'll start with our algae intake in terms of the scoring mechanisms. You notice it's a pretty simple mechanism over here. This is just a rigid piece with cat tongue tape on it, and we have one rotating side over here. That went through a lot of iterations. We were gonna do a rack and pinion piece and then a virtual four bar, but we realized after time and time again after 
multiple prototypes and iterations, that simpler would always be better. Um, unlike that, on the coral intake, we had to do some slightly complicated and pretty cute things to make the robot really function well. So notice we have this hunky uh, piece of carbon fiber over here, and actually inside of it, we have a bag motor that's on an 81 to one gear ratio with our wrist over here so that the piece can rotate and place onto the coral without having us, us having to spin the robot around, which has been really helpful. You'll see more SLS parts on here that have also been optimized, and we were able to take a lot of weight out of this piece, which is extremely important because this is very high on the robot, so keeping that CG low was super important for us. We've got a four, three to one gear ratio over here and a four to one over here because we realized after a lot of iterations that matching the surface speeds of this guy would be super important, and then also getting the compression just right. And optimization helped a lot too with making sure this wouldn't bow out too much as we were designing. Colin, thank you so much. Super interesting engineering that goes into this. Andreas, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the control that goes into the hotbot. How are you guys able to program it so well? Yeah, so this year the design guys made an ever more complicated robot like they always do. So there are all, a lot of um, basically mechanisms that interplay in different ways and different scenarios. So we have the wrist, the arm, the algae, the ground intake, and the elevator and the climber which are the main mechanisms of the robot. So an important goal for us this year was to achieve a high level of automation. As you just saw with the ground intake, basically it was one button press and took the uh, coral in and went from here up to here, all in one smooth motion. So in, in order to accomplish this, we have to read data from several sensors on the robot. So for the ground intake, for example, we have a beam break in here and we, we have another beam break in here. And what that allows us to do is detect when we have an object and uh, basically start off our different commands that we have chained together in order to accomplish this motion. And furthermore, basically how these um, mechanisms interplay is uh, kind of challenging and complicated at times for us. So this intake basically has to stay out of the way when the arm flips over. So that was like a lot of fun, cool logic that we had to get working in order to get this robot scoring. And um, we also have two beam brakes on the wrist. So when we intake from the ground, our coral is in this orientation. But a lot of the times, if our ground intake isn't working or we want to go to the human player station for some reason, usually it takes in the middle or like this. So we have a beam break here that will detect that. And we have like a different shot for the offset coral. So this allows us to have more robust scoring and it'll work basically in any orientation. We also have um, a can range over here, which is like a distance finder, detects how far away the algae is in our mechanism. So we have, we used to have the uh, operator at the intake and on a separate button, and basically they controlled when it was intaking an algae. We were able to automate that process with the can range to say, if it's if it's close enough, it'll stop intaking for you. So we've been working a lot on decreasing the amount of buttons the operator has and basically making it an easier experience for the drive team and more automated. And another example of this is the barge shot. So we used to have it be fully driver controlled where the, the operator would press Y and the, it would go up into a barge, but now, and the driver would have to shoot it out. But now all we do is we get the robot pose and orientation from the cameras and um, the odometry on the field. And based on position on the field, it'll go up and do the barge automatically. All you have to do is press one button, the driver drives in, and it'll score the barge in here, up and over. And we also have a higher degree of automation on the climber. Basically, as Ella shown, we have two limit switches here, and if both of them are pressed while the, the operator is holding a button, it'll climb automatically for you. Instead of having to pull back and flip the servos on two different buttons, it'll do it all on one button. And also another thing about the climber that's really cool oh, is our servo in here is basically a, like a two gear transmission that has ratchets on the way in, but it's uh, no ratchets on the way out. So we can climb and exert force as we need to. Thank you, Andreas. Yep. Uh, Maya, let's wrap it up with you. I heard you guys have some more custom features on your dashboard that you'd like to talk about. Let's hear a little bit more about that. Uh, this year, we've had a lot more trouble aligning to the reef. Uh, we use three cameras this year and an NVIDIA Jetson to make sure that that can happen. We've got two cameras way down low and one way up high so that we can see it farther away. And we have a big map of tables inside of our code that says move six inches to the left or the right, depending on which hole you're trying to align to. And the auto align then flashes the green LEDs when it's on target. Another thing is on the dashboard, we have a big auto align on target. We have our left and our right uh, switches for the climber in case that the auto climb is not working. And we have our speed in robo jacket units. So the drivetrain just knows how cool they really are. Maya and the rest of the hot team, thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Incredible robot once again. Best of luck tomorrow at the Saturday for MSC and uh, throughout the rest of the Reefscape season. 
My name is James from Fun Robotics Network, and thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest.